Hi and welcome to another Node-RED video. In this video we're going to look at initializing flow data on startup. Now often when you start Node-RED you want to start it with, with no conditions and the example I give in the tutorial is you've got a sensor and maybe you're going to get that sensor to trigger an alarm when a temperature falls or when it, when it exceeds a certain value. So you need to know those uh, maximum minimum values and they need to be stored in the flow. So how do you do it? And that's what we're going to look at in this video. Well, there are several methods of doing it, and they all have the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the quickest and easiest is to, is to hard code it in the flow. The other popular method, and you should be familiar with this when dealing with operating systems, is to actually read it in from a settings file. And another method in Node-RED is to actually use the config node, and I'll show you the config node there, which you need to install in order to use it. So to illustrate those three methods, I'm going to use this flow. And first off, uh, normally to initialize a flow, you use uh, some kind of trigger. And you tend to set the trigger to inject right at the beginning after a, a short amount of time. To store them directly in the flow, uh, you use either the flow uh, variable or you use the, the global variable. If you're not familiar with those variables, then you can have a look at the video I did on the those variables, the context, the flow, and the global variables. And I'll put a link in the in the description below. Now, to set those variables, you can either use a change node uh, or you can use a, a function node. So the change node, you just set each of the variables using the, the set, and you just add another one here if you if you've got multiple ones. So I'm just using a simple variable here. Now, if I have lots of variables I need to store, I tend to store them in an object rather than as simple as simple variables like you're seeing here. So this is the change node. And alternatively, you can use a function node to do it. So you set the sensor state and you store, store the sensor state in the flow variable. So I'm using the flow here. You can use either the flow or the global. And for these to work, you need to kick them off, which you do with the inject node and you get it to inject after a short delay when the flow starts. Now the other way of doing it is using this config node. Now you'll need to install this, it's not part of the core nodes. And you'll notice it doesn't have an input. Uh, you do, you can actually trigger it manually here, but you don't have to trigger it, it actually triggers on startup. And if you look at it, it looks like the change node. You can see it here, you can uh, add another property here, just like you can in the change node. So that's three methods of hard coding uh, variables in a flow. Now, if you're wondering what this main function is here for, it's there for illustration purposes only. Uh, once you've actually set your variables, you're going to have to use them somewhere in the flow. And so you typically have a function node here that reads in those variables and then uses them. Now, the advantage of hard coding the variables in the flow like this is that if you actually export the flow, um, then they're exported with the flow. Uh, which is nice. Also, it's very, very quick and easy to do. The, but the big disadvantage is, is that you have to use the admin interface to do it. So it's not actually particularly user friendly. And you tend to do this if you don't need to change these variables or you don't think you'll need to change these variables in the future. If you think you might need to change them in the future, then you're better using a, a configuration file. And that's what we're going to look at now. Now, there are various formats for the configuration file. You can have JSON encoded configuration files. You can have XML. You can have YAML. Uh, you can have CSV configuration files. And those are the ones I, I tend to use a lot. Now, the, the way they work is you use a inject node again uh, to inject at the beginning to read a file. So the file gets read and it gets passed into the appropriate parser. So if you're going to choose a configuration format, I recommend you choose a format where you actually have a parser available in Node-RED. And the, the ones available are CSV, JSON, XML, and, and YAML. Uh, if you're going to use any other format, then you will have to create your own parser to pass the configuration files. I tend to prefer using CSV files. It's particularly good if you've got tabular type data because you'll be familiar with CSV format if you if you use uh, Excel spreadsheets. And 
what you do, as I say, is you in, use the inject node to trigger the file read, pass the data onto a CSV parser, and then you pass that into a function node to interpret the data. Okay, so let's see this work. You can see here I'm storing my data in a, a file called sensor uh, data.csv, and this is what it looks like. Uh, I'm simulating several sensors, so there's a sensor name, maximum value, minimum value, the type of sensor, and default state. And you can see here sensor one, maximum zero, minimum zero, type one, and default is open and you can see sensor 2, same type 2, default is on, and sensor 3, minus 30, 60, etc. Uh, the type of sensor, it could be a door sensor, a light sensor, uh, your sort of typical binary sensor, or it could be, as we got here, sensor 3, it could be a temperature or humidity sensor, and obviously you assign the types yourself, you can actually give it descriptive names, I've just given it numbers there. Okay, so there's my data, and you can see I've got the the header there, which describes the data, a typical CSV file there. Okay, I can click the inject node, read the file, pass it with the CSV node, and then it gets passed on to the function node where we use it, and we can use it here in a change node to set, set the sensor values here, or we can set the sensor values in a function node as we saw earlier on there and I'm also going to send it to the debug node so we can actually see the see the data. Uh, you might have noticed we've got a, a dashboard node here. Now on my flows even though I, I start with an inject node usually I finish up putting a dashboard interface there so we can actually trigger this read um, from a dashboard and you can see the dashboards here I can trigger it from here read config data and also save config data which we can look at in a second so let's trigger it here and you can see straight away I've got the four objects sensor 1 and all the way down to sensor 4 the maximum and minimum values and that's straight into a, a JavaScript object and if I look at the change node. You can see I'm setting sensors to the payload so I'm storing all these in, in a object called sensors. Remember I said if I've got more than one variable I tend to store it in, in an object and if I look at the function node we do exactly the same. I'm not saving it in, the, in this function node here. I didn't want to save it twice but I could read into the function node into there and I could save it in, in the flow. But normally you'd be using it in here in this function node. And if I look at the the flow object, look at the context data, we look at the flow and we can see here is there's sensors and there's our data stored in, in our sensors. So we successfully read the data in from a CSV file, passed it with the, the CSV node and we've stored it in an object in, in our node and we've also made it available to our function so so we can use it. So that brings us on to the final bit of the of the video and often we actually make changes to, to data in our flow but we don't want to lose those changes we actually want to save those changes so when the flow restarts we restart with the changed data rather than with the default values. So here we've got again an inject node and again we've got a dashboard interface here where we can save it from the dashboard and this time we're going to write the data so there's our function to write the data so we pick up the sensor values from our, our flow and if the topic is saved so if we clicked on the save button then we set our payload to sensors and return the message which basically passes that onto the JSON node. We JSON encode the data and then we pass it into the file node and the file stores it here and we've got a debug node here just to see what happens. Okay so let me go and show you the file. 
So this is what the file looks like. You can see it's a, a JSON encoded file. And you can see the there's the sensor, there's the object, and we've got sensor one, sensor sensor two, and sensor three and sensor four. Yes, sensor four here. Okay, they're all using the default values because I haven't actually changed them in the, in the flow. So let me change them, and we'll go for sensor four and we'll change the default value from 50 to something else so let's go and do that okay so I've just created a, a little inject node here to inject a, a value into the change node and I'm going to change the sensors it's, a, it's an array so I'm going to go for the third which is that one there so the sensors one two three objects sorry so four objects uh, starting at zero I'm going for the last one which is sensor four and I'm going to set the default value and I'm going to set it to the payload which is 67 so let me inject there and if I go to the sensors object and refresh it and we have a look at the fourth one you can see the default value is set to 67 so now I'm in a position to save it so I can either go to the dashboard and save it or I can go and click on there so let's save it this time from the dashboard and let's go and have a look at the data okay so this is a configuration file sorry a save data file and you can see here the default value is set to 67 okay so that's how to initialize flows using art coded uh, data or using configuration files and also to store data from node red flows into into configuration files and so that brings us to the end of the video if you've got any comments on the video then please leave them below if you like the video then uh, click on the like button below and if you'd like to get notified of new videos on the channel then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell and if you do use social media and like to share it on social media then please feel free to do so uh, don't forget there is a tutorial, written tutorial on the website and I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, until next time, goodbye.